Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. In this week's video, we're taking a look at the Grey Ghost Gear Apparition Bag. So I know this is something a little different for me. I think this is the first video I've ever done on like an, a, a bag review. Uh, but I, I got my hands on a, a Grey Ghost bag, this apparition bag, and I really liked it. And the reason I like it is it's an actual Grey Man bag. Now that's a term that's kind of new. Um, basically the term is supposed to mean a bag that blends into the general public. It kind of you know falls into the white noise backscatter. Nobody's going to notice it. Nobody's going to think it's military. Nobody's going to assume it's got firearms in it. That's the idea of the bag. For a rifle system, your bags were usually limited to um, takedown bags, where you'd have to take the upper and lower apart and store them in there so you'd reduce the overall length of the, the bag so it didn't look like it was carrying a rifle. Now, the Apparition bag is designed for SBRs. Uh, I've got a, t uh, I think the, the biggest rifle you're probably going to be able to get in there, as far as I can tell, is a 10.5 inch. Uh, or a 7.5 would fit very well or like I did uh, one of my SPRs is a folding a law folding 14.5 inch pinned um, so it's a full civilian legal non NFA length rifle but I can fold it up fits right in the bag what's the advantage of a gray man bag well it allows you to carry your rifle system and not have people think you're carrying a rifle system the first gray man bags uh, that I saw earlier you know probably 10 years ago were from 5.11 or companies like that and the bag was a solid color so it kind of blended in to the general public. It wasn't like a camouflage pattern or anything like that. But then they started putting molly on the outside of them and, and things like that and then people started putting pouches on them and pretty soon it doesn't blend in anymore. Now sometimes we give the general public a lot of credit on how good their situational awareness is but if you look at this bag I could easily blend in with a, a, a line of people waiting to buy Sarah McLaughlin tickets. This bag would fit right in. If I wanted to go check out an arcade fire concert, but I was worried about ISIS, I could definitely do it with this bag. This bag looks like something you'd see on a college campus. It blends right in, uh, and that's pretty much the idea. The idea isn't to surreptitiously uh, enter into a non-permissive environment with your firearms so you can operate. The idea is that I can have a rifle in this bag, and it doesn't look like I have a rifle in this bag. So whatever I'm doing in life, whether I'm out hiking, which this bag definitely fits the bill, and we'll get to that, or if I just don't want my neighbors in an apartment complex or my neighbors in the neighborhood to know I have firearms, so I can cart this bag in and out of the house, and no one's going to be, no one's going to look at this bag and think he's probably got a suppressed PDW in there. Now, what can you carry? Uh, biggest question about that. Well, you open up your main compartment, which is fully Velcro back. And right now, I have a 10.5 inch PW, uh, SBR. So, I've got my rifle. Rifle fits nicely. Um, they include these Velcro cards so you can move things around, help secure items. Uh, I've got my suppressor. And I've got a ready mag. So, that's main compartment. All Velcro lined, hook and loop lined. What do you want to say? I don't want to, you know, copyright infringement. Um, so you're able to configure this gun to carry a rifle system, or if you want, handguns, ammunition, whatever you need. Uh, on the back side, I've got two spare magazines, two 30-round magazines, and cute little magazine pouches right there. Those are awesome. And then in this part right here, I have all my medical stuff ready to go. Now, your secondary compartment, more of your admin compartment, right now I've got in there, I've got my multitasker, you got your little webbing pouch, 
additional pocket there for maybe your ID, your wallet, or for me, I'm, I just threw the multitasker in there. Um, and that's very handy. Uh, I'm rocking a hoodie in there, I got that. Two additional admin pockets, additional Velcro, and then I've got two more of these if I need to secure gear either in the main compartment or in this compartment. And I've got these straps as well, which Velcro, Vroco, open area, I can secure just about anything I need to secure inside the bag with those two main compartments. Now, on the outside, I've got another smaller pocket. I've got some chem lights in there, no big deal. Um, you can store pretty much anything that'll fit in there, and I'm carrying all that gear in a bag that blends very well. Can I fit more in it? Absolutely. I may not have to. Um, I wouldn't consider this to be like a three-day assault pack, uh, but it's something you can definitely take on a day hike or an overnight trip, uh, depending on... Um, how much equipment or how much gear, how much stuff you actually need to bring with you. Now, outside ergonomics of the bag. Uh, I've got my cummerbund, I've got my seat belt, uh, and then I've got an outside pocket on either side of this. Um, I use an iPhone 6, pretty decent sized phone, fits right in there if you want to keep your phone in there. If you've got a 6 Plus, you're going to go ahead and have to get a necklace for that or put it somewhere else because it's not going to fit in this little pocket. Um, and I don't think they intended this pocket for uh, a cell phone. Maybe you just put some trail mix in there, I don't know. Uh, but it's handy to have these two little cummerbund pockets because it, depending on how you wear your bag and what kind of equipment you have on your person, your cummerbund might make it difficult for you to get in your pockets or something like that, so that's a nice addition. Uh, the padding is kind of ridiculously generous, you'll see here. Now as far as back support, back padding, uh, you've got two padded, uh, basically, which creates a soft frame, there's no hard frame in this bag. Uh, and you've got an, a spinal channel for an air channel. Uh, most miles I put on this bag at any one time during, I guess you'd call it the review process, was I did a ten, about a 10 mile hike, uh, carrying a rifle, ammunition, things of that nature. Um, basically everything you see that I showed you that I have in the bag right now is what I had in on the hike and it, it performed awesome. Um, the padding is great because it provides support, but it's not super thick and it's not super, it's wouldn't what I consider too firm because sometimes padding can be so firm that eventually after, you know, 5, 6, 15, 20 miles, it starts to wear on you and actually in induces fatigue. You see that a lot with shoulder straps, but some of your back padding could be the same way. Uh, another cool thing about it is the yoke is adjustable. I can adjust my ride height on the shoulder straps, which is very cool. Um, in addition to the seat belt, you've got your chest bungee. Uh, so you can bring those shoulder straps closer together um, or release it, leave it lying, get your ride, get your ride basically where you want it. So then we get down to the bottom of the bag. Uh, I've got another little admin pocket right there on the very bottom. And then I've got a pretty unique feature. I've got, if it starts to rain, snow, whatever, I've got a weather, little weather bonnet that I can pull out and use to cover the bag. Uh, it actually deploys pretty quickly, covers the whole bag up, and then you don't have to worry about it getting wet. Now the, the uh, the bag itself is semi-water resistant, but if it's really coming down, something like this is definitely going to come in handy because any kind of nylon or Cordura product over time, over exposure to moisture, eventually it's going to get in there. And usually it gets in there first at the zippers and then at the, the seams and then basically saturates the whole bag. So having this option is pretty cool. Now this is not a rapid deployment bag. Uh, there are other bags out there, in fact, Grey Ghost offers some. Um, you can get a rifle out of this bag pretty quickly, but that's not its design intent. It's supposed to be, a, you know, it's designed to be a, a day hike bag that allows you to conceal a rifle or a rifle that looks like a day hike bag that allows you to conceal a rifle. Their intent wasn't a rapid deployment, oh my God, or an active shooter response bag or something like that. Um, my outdoor pedigree, my hiking pedigree, uh, I grew up in a hunting and a camping family where it was mandatory before I knew any better. Uh, and then I joined the army, I was in the infantry where camping sucked because we didn't have campfires and s'mores. We had night vision which is cool but night vision doesn't keep you warm. Um, so I've done some hiking, um, done some road marching, uh, I know what it's like to carry a pack for a long distance uh, and I know what feels right. I know that you, no matter how 
greatly designed a bag is, you're going to have a fatigue point. At some point, something on the bag is going to start to aggravate you. Uh, the most, like I said, the, the most miles I put on this bag so far is 10 uh, at one time. Um, and I found the bag to be pretty comfortable. Uh, I did get a little bit of shoulder fatigue, but that's just because I was carrying a little bit of weight. Not a huge deal. Uh, it wasn't like a life ending event. The bag is super comfortable. It's a great bag for your general distance day hikes. Obviously, if you're going to be walking 25 miles, you're probably going to be carrying a totally different bag system because you're going to get 25 miles away and have to camp out or something like that. So this is a bag I'd consider for your general light hiking or a bag that looks like a light hiker that is going to allow you to blend in, so to speak. Um, if you move your rifles around a lot and you're worried about people being aware of what you have, or if you just want a bag that's going to blend into a crowd or something you want to be able to move your rifle through, or if you want a bag that you can, you know, high threat situation take with you just in case, this is a really excellent choice because it's going to blend into any environment. Some of those other gray band bags I've seen out there, tennis racket bags, uh, you can put SBRs in those. The problem with the tennis racket bag is the further you are away from a tennis court, the more that bag stands out. Uh, and really, guitar cases, same thing. Some, some of those bags can be out of place, whereas I can see somebody running a light hiking bag pretty much anywhere. Now, what about what I don't like? The one thing I, I wish the bag had, honestly, and this is kind of nitpicking, is another inch of height. Just one more inch, just another inch. You know, I'd take a centimeter. I honestly would. Because with the 10.5, depending on your muzzle device, it does fit, but it's pretty snug. Uh, no issue getting it in or out, but I would like to have just a little more real estate. A centimeter, maybe half, I'd take half a centimeter, uh, or an inch, uh, honestly. But it would like, because I'm running, uh, you know, a pretty reasonable uh, muzzle device on, on this, P this PWS. But if I was running a longer muzzle device, I might not be able to get the rifle into the bag as easy as I would like. Um, obviously, I can't get a 10.5 inch in there suppressed. But like with this Griffin, the K can, if I was running a 7.5 and I had a folder on it, or even if I had the 10.5 with a folder on it, I could probably get it into the bag suppressed, not something I tried. Uh, but that's probably my only wish is that the bag had about another inch of ride height. So final verdict, uh, what do I think about the Grey Ghost Gear Apparition Bag? I think it is probably one of the best Grey Man bags on the market. There are other options out there, but I think this one blends the best. I think just the color patterns that you have available to you allow you to buy the bag and be confident that it's going to blend in with a Dave Matthews Band concert or any kind of non-permissive environment, any environment that's not going to be gun friendly or any environment where any kind of tactical gear would stand out. So if you're in the market for a bag that you want to be able to be completely innocuous, you want it to blend in as much as possible, you really can't go wrong with the Gary Ghost Apparition. Unfortunately, it's not going to fit a 16 or an 18 inch traditional rifle even with a collapsing stock. That's just not a thing. Uh, if you wanted to do that, you'd have to either put a law adapter on the rifle so you could fold the stock, or you'd have to go with a different weapons platform, or, of course, your SBRs. I'm Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly. Oh, one more thing. Uh, I'm sure the more observant watchers have noticed this. This rifle's tech looks like it's on fire, right? I'm sure somebody would, would probably drop that in the comment if I didn't add this part. Uh, it's actually in cruiser condition. Uh, that's the way I store my bags when I'm using them, when, I'm, when I actually have a rifle and a bag. Uh, that's the way the rifle's stored. The hammer is dropped, it cannot go on safe, which tells me immediately that the firearm does not have a round in the chamber, and no matter how many times I would yank on the trigger, nothing would happen. Uh, the great thing about carrying a rifle in this configuration, why I like to do it in this condition, is if I have a round chambered and it's on safe and it's in a backpack or a bag or something like that or bouncing around the vehicle, uh, friction, vibration, and just contact with other materials can sweep the rifle from safe to fire, which is why cruiser condition is a thing. So anytime I have a rifle in the bag, that's the condition it's going to be in. Uh, if I needed to put the rifle into immediate work, all I'd have to do is shoulder it, rack it, and it's already in fire, ready to go. If I didn't need to immediately fire, I could just safe it just like your normal rifle procedures. You can take a tour of the PBR factory. Blend in at a live aid event. Browse in a fixie shop. Blend in with vegans, even if you are vegan. Drive a Dodge Stratus. Go to a Margaret Cho show. Transfer seamlessly from gun show to dog show. Hail a cab at 3 a.m. and have them stop. You think I should use like the old Greg voice? Yeah, like, y'all like my table? Got a new table.